Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you're new, welcome, and if you are returning, welcome back. And I really do hope that you are finding my weekly analysis videos uh, useful and uh, you're seeing some benefit in your trading. If you are new, just in case you don't know, um, and you probably won't, but uh, the charts I'm going to be analyzing are. Um, in the description box below there's links in there as well as links to some other educational material as well and what I'll do start doing from now on as well for everyone is posting the news links in the in if, if not the description box the comment box so um, we start off as we always do analyzing the fundamental analysis so into uh, the coming week um, it says trading economics says uh, final estimates of us first quarter gdp growth will be keenly watched yes it will um, and that's really due to um, uh, the potential if they're looking at the potential effect of the trump china trade war so if it's having an effect having an effect on everybody really but um it's definitely going to be uh, watched because of that and also it may add to the narrative of a us recession or slowdown at least um, they go go through the contraction phase of the economic cycle before they actually get to a recession they can't just jump to a recession um, so uh, if that starts if the economy US economy starts to slow down um, then it adds pressure I guess on the Fed to cut interest rates um, and uh, which is pretty much I would say what happened um, you know last week but they are very dovish the Fed and the expectation for a rate cut is um, is imminent in the next uh, meeting and I'll get into that in a sec anyways alongside personal income and outlays and housing data elsewhere important releases include UK final first quarter GDP growth that's going to be important consumer sentiment and current account eurozone flash uh, inflation rate that's definitely going to be important and business survey Japan industrial output retail sales and jobless rate again some important stuff going on there also as well um, not mentioned in there is going to be the New Zealand official cash rate um, an RBNZ uh, rate statement they're actually expected to hold rates um, they are in a, on a cutting cycle but I think this time around the expectation the forecast anyway is on, on Forex Factory is that they will potentially hold rates this week and then you've got Canada um, GDP as well uh, month for month GDP to come out so a pretty busy week news wise and um, just get into a little bit of uh, news what happened in, in the past week and potentially what's going on in the future so traders this week bet on Fed rate cut as in record setting numbers so Wednesday saw a record for trading in the Fed funds future mar futures markets which tries to anticipate where the Federal Reserve is heading with interest rates yeah um, so what you can do is go to uh, the, the cmegroup.com and again I will post this link in the description box um, or the comment section below and this gives um, pretty much an estimation of the probabilities of a potential rate cut ease no change or a hike and this is what the uh, the financial institutions and the bets pretty much are so there's a hundred percent um, probability at the moment that the Fed or they're betting anyway that the Fed are going to ease right so 100% of uh, financial institutions think that there's going to be an ease now it depends on how much they are going to ease is it going to be by you know 25.25 um, or 25 basis points or 0.25 percent or is it going to be by 50 percent 50 percent 0.5 percent or uh, 50 basis points right it just depends that's a, a smaller cut that's the larger cut um, so they're factoring in an ease and interest rates uh, I guess when central banks want to cut interest rates is um, it cheapens the currency which is what you're going to obviously see and what you've probably seen this week the power, the dollar sorry selling off uh, this week and on the expectations of a potential rate cut now it just depends on how much the Fed may cut by right um, again also in the week ahead um, from the forex.com uh, website and again uh, this just basically ties into uh, something that I wanted to say about 
interest rates and cutting interest rates. You shouldn't necessarily be focused only on shorting the dollar because um, I tell you know a, a lot of the traders in um, I mentor in the group um, trading one eighty group is that it's a comparison. All central banks pretty much want a cheaper dollar, and they're all pretty much cutting. And this just um, you know backs up what I was what I've been saying for the past um, you know uh, few months at least. Um, and it's basically, uh, Fawad Riza Quazada, I think that's how you pronounce the name, says this week was all about major central banks as the race to zero and beyond resumed, yeah, with the Fed and European Central Bank signaling potential cuts. So, ECB signaled um, some stimulus, potential stimulus this week, while the Bank of England was slightly less hawkish. Uh, than they had been expected and that was because inflation came out less than expected the RBA governor hinted at the prospects of loosening monetary policy they've already cut right um, after more 25 basis point cut earlier in the month so they're all cutting and the Bank of, Inc Bank of sorry, Japan was surprisingly dovish as well so you know they're all um, all dovish even the Swiss National Bank are talking about the uh, Swiss franc being overvalued and uh, you know potentially having to intervene in the market so I say that to basically say this that the Federal Reserve even though they're cutting they're not you know the US is not the worst currency out of you know the major currencies so um, a weaker dollar it spells trouble for everybody else if you know what I mean so yes the dollar might be selling off but it puts pressure on the uh, other central banks to also weaken their currencies even further and if you want to know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to interest rates and inflation and it's, you really should know about interest rates and inflation because this is really what moves the markets as well as you know uh, gross domestic products it's free um, fundamental analysis course and it pretty much goes over interest rates inflation um, hopefully not in a too boring way that's gonna you know kind of your eyes are gonna glaze over and you know you're gonna switch off after you know the first five minutes or so um, but it's important that you do know this stuff because this is really what moves the markets it's not a, you know a hammer at, a hammer candle at, um, you know support or resistance or an engulfing that's just price price is um, it's fundamentals and sentiment what is risk sentiment is what moves the markets anyways getting on to the um, the charts as everybody likes to be interested in the charts and we start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index and the Dow Jones dollar index this week um, pretty much uh, from last week we were coming up into this potential supply zone and potentially going to sell off and we were waiting for what was going to happen on uh, on Wednesday with the FOMC meeting and as many of you are aware prices came up on the Monday the Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday I went down into this demand zone Yes, we plot demand zones on a chart. Demand zones are just indicators, uh, a, a level of potential value and proven value in the past. Obviously, the tone of the central bank, um, there was no demand at this area here. And into, obviously, Friday, prices have come down into here. And now we have to see if there is potential um value, depending on what price action does around this area, at this area of demand um, for the dollar for the Dow Jones dollar index and the Dow Jones dollar index is just a measure of uh, US dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro the yen the pound and the Australian dollar so if we go to the charts and go to the Dow Jones dollar index uh, we've touched this level several times so um, from a supply and demand perspective this isn't necessarily the best zone to get long at it's an option we've touched it once twice is okay but i think there probably may be more potential selling off to the downside but we could see obviously um prices actually come up as well and if we do see some dollar strength um or basically profit taking we use the dollar index um uh, maybe some sort of bullishness uh, or demand I and mean, we would look to the dollar crosses and look for demand in you know price action on those currency pairs as confluence so we could see basically prices move higher um, and if they do this is a nice area to look for buy trades on the Dow Jones dollar index 
um, I'm a buyer of the, of, of the of the dollar, regardless of uh, whether the Fed are cutting rates um, um, and and the kind of negative sentiment against the dollar. Um, anyway, it doesn't mean I'm going to be a, necessarily a buyer here or here, but I will look to buy, you know, the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, um, um, as I think again the Dow Jones and the dollar is um, definitely a buy, regardless of. Uh, the monetary policy of the Fed. So, um, if you do want to be a buyer, just look for some sort of a price action that confirms an entry on any of your dollar crosses. If prices do come down to this area, then then look for again some buying. Moving on to the dollar yen. So dollar yen last week prices again the the dollar sold off yen uh, strengthened again we are in a risk off environment and the yen strengthens in a risk off environment as well so you had prices come down to this you know it's 107 thereabouts demand zone so we're looking at updating the charts on the dollar yen we have to now include some supply and where are we here we go supply zone right there Again, looking for potential buy trades if the Dow Jones dollar index starts to you know increase, and so I see some bullish price. This should reflect, hopefully, on the dollar index. If not, and you're looking to keep continually sell the uh, dollar um, into you know the following week or potential coming weeks, you'd have to wait for really price action to kind of come up into this area before looking at um, some sell trades. Um, but a decent area to look for some longs providing that you know risk is less off and uh you know the dollar for me is starting to look like a like an absolute bargain it just depends on um sentiment at the moment and whether the market also agrees with me but there are obviously telltale signs i'm waiting for before looking at buying so um decent buy right now and if you're looking to sell after this uh pretty much heavy downtrend um, over the past couple of months should be looking at that area there as a level of supply proven value for the Japanese yen before getting short looking at the dollar Swiss again dollar Swiss was just selling off as well so there was no demand here after pretty much uh, the Federal Reserve said they were going to be uh, potentially cutting rates or they indicated that they potentially might and uh, prices again there's no demand at this demand zone prices kept you know continuing to the downside and I've been asked about pending orders and this is one of the reasons why I don't trade pending orders is simply because you know you could get moments like this right the market needs to prove at some point that there is demand here you can't well, say you can't you can if you want to but using pending orders at levels of demand or supply isn't always the best um, you know uh, entry um, it's it's you know I, f I think personally it's better to see some sort of price action before looking at getting um, you know long in an area um, and I say some sort of there's got to be obviously some sort of qualifying price action it's not every single price action that you're looking for right um, because the market is obviously showing you that there is no demand here you know there's more supply there's, this isn't necessarily a bargain value for the dollar um, so now we're down into this area here and I think personally this is again a bargain area um, I've been waiting for this for a while for the price to really come down into this area um, and again I could be could be wrong right price can continue to go, go all the way down and keep you know going down um, but you know so be it it's a game of probabilities but I'm going to wait for price action and some other obviously qualifying factors before I look for any kind of buy trades um, for the Swiss franc I think this is um, uh, and the Swiss National Bank are pretty much saying it themselves that the Swiss franc is highly valued basically overvalued um, and they're going to be doing potentially intervening at some point I'm not saying it's going to be into the next week but at some point they're looking to the, the worse this gets this the more expensive the Swiss franc gets is the worse it becomes for the Swiss National Bank anyway that's some advanced um, fundamental analysis technical wise 
what do you want to see technically so dollar swiss we want to delete these levels here look for some sort of supply zones if you're looking to get short on the dollar and buy the swiss national uh, the swiss franc sorry uh, you'd really be looking for prices to come all the way back up at the moment to here before looking at any kind of short trades or you'd be looking for prices to make lower lows right so you need a bullish price bullish um, day and then a bearish day and then prices would need to come back to this area here before looking at gain short um, if you're looking to get long right now then you'll be looking for some bullish price action probably hopefully down into this um, anywhere within this area here and potentially what you might want to see as well is a bit of a manipulation beyond that level we'll coming to that round number 97 round number before looking at the uh, at getting long so that's it's pretty much two options um, that you're looking for if not then you know this is going to be the next area to look for some long trades let's delete that we can delete this as well what else do we have going on at this level an area of looks like support and resistance why is that important simply because other traders trade support and resistance levels um, so we know that this is an area of value um, and uh, when it comes to the supply and demand equation um, we understand that there are technical traders that are probably going to be entering long at this level as well as they trade support support resistance support as well right so value traders like ourselves say ourselves like myself and if you're supply and demand traders you should be looking at this as proven value in the past and also technical traders are going to be looking at that level as well so that hopefully there should be bit more demand and supply in this area um, moving on to the dollar CAD dollar CAD surprise surprise if you did get in here at this supply zone well done to you as prices did sell off there was a nice outside candle you know on the daily very nice and that was pretty I think that was pre FOMC but if you thought that the dollar was going to get weaker and they were going to definitely cut and have that effect then a nice sell trade right there at supply um, again there was no demand proven demand within these demand zones and again this level had been touched once several times twice three times and the weaker the more times a level touches the weaker it becomes I was saying that from last week um, moving forward we have can eliminate these demand zones we've come down really into this supply zone I'm gonna move that level up to here and there in fact I'll move it to here um, so from a shorting perspective again you need to be waiting for price to really come all the way back up to here before looking at getting short don't know whether that's gonna happen this week or you're looking for this would represent a lower high potential lower low if prices you see a bearish candle then you'd look for prices to come back up into that area before looking at short trades if you're looking for long trades again this is the demand zone you'll be looking at again going down into a lower time frame before looking at um, potentially you know some uh, some long trades if you trade you know double tops sorry double bottoms or engulfing you know candles uh, you know any kind of um, MACD etc you'll be looking at this area here on a lower time frame to look for some long trades moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar so New Zealand dollar US dollar come down into the demand zone from last week and then we saw this happen so there was a bit of demand for the New Zealand dollar right nice little entry at this area here so uh, betting on some US dollar weakness New Zealand dollar strength um, into this week I don't think anything's really changed uh, regarding the, Ze the New Zealand dollar from a level perspective no nothing so again if you wanted to get short uh, on the 
New Zealand dollar, then there's going to be an area of supply right there. And that'd be your first opportunity to look to buy the US dollar and short the New Zealand dollar. And if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar over the US dollar, you think it's going to increase the US dollar is going to decrease in value, then this will be the area. But just again, keep in mind that we've touched it once, twice. This is the third time. Um, sorry, this is once, twice, and then the third time is uh, is 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 definitely the weakest one. So be careful. If prices do come down here, you'd have to look for some sort of manipulation to the upside. If you were looking at that, again, I think the dollar US dollar is the stronger out of the two. So um, this level's touched once twice already so if prices do come up to here um, I would want to really see either a manipulation in this area um, I mean it's fine to take a to take a short trade here anyway um, but if it does come up to here I would want to see putting more manipulation before looking at short trades um, or prices to really come up into this 0 0.675 level before looking at you know short trades but anywhere around here is decent for a short just keep in mind that it has touched you know, um, uh, this area has touched a few times, if you know what I mean. Um, so what you can do in that position is you can either take uh, a smaller risk. So if you normally risk half, a I mean, one percent, you can risk half a percent on the position um, as it's probably a lower pro probability trade. Doesn't mean that it won't work out. Or you can, if you go, if you enter maybe you know multiple positions, maybe just go in at one position, if you know what I mean, rather than two uh, positions, etc. So that's how you kind of manage, you you know, a few ways of managing your risk. So moving on to the pound dollar. The pound dollar um, did go a bit lower into this lower demand zone before pushing up a lot higher. Um, so the uh, Bank of England came out. Um, this week and was less hawkish um, again inflation didn't I think came out below expectations but due to the focus being on the US dollar uh, the um, the pound is kind of gained in strength but that all that does is that gives us an opportunity to get short on the pound again back up into supply zones and I'm looking at shorting around this 128 level if it can this is more of a fresher level of supply um, as this level was touched once twice again third time we did get a bit of a sell-off right those wicks indicated a bit of a sell-off but i think prices are going to come up to this fresher area of supply before selling off so looking at the charts we can delete that probably delete this as well right and um what i'll do is i will delete that demand but create a new demand zone right here demand right um, and again so it's levels touched several times so what I'm looking at is a move to a fresher level of supply before looking at getting short um, again there was some supply here on the lower time frame right there was a you know, on the underside of that, but the better area was always going to be at the absolute, you know, highs of fresh area. So, um, uh, yeah, pretty much shorts for me. Um, but if you are looking at trying to get long on this currency, then you'd be looking at again prices to either come all the way down to here before looking at some long trades, or you're looking at a bearish candle. Bullish candle, and then looking at prices to kind of come down into that created demand zone before looking at long trades. So, um, those are pretty much the options at the moment for the pound dollar. Moving on to the euro dollar, euro dollar. So, euro dollar came down into this demand zone. Um, again, we were waiting for the Fed minutes statement and if you did manage to buy anywhere around here well done to you um, and hold as well so uh, well done to you me personally I was never going to be a buyer of the euro um, at all and uh, this price action for me just brings uh, makes the dollar you know to buy the dollar at a cheaper exchange rate so moving to the 
euro dollar up into a nice fresher area of supply as this level of supply has been touched what once twice already again i'm always skeptical with prices coming up to a level of supply that's been touched several times um it usually more than often fakes out <clears throat> a lot of uh, uh resistance traders who think that a level is you know touches several times the stronger it becomes and in fact the weaker it becomes but now this comes up into an area where i do want to be a buyer of the us dollar i'm interested in buying here so now I'm just looking for price action and some other um, indicators on the lower time frame so uh you can delete this this level here delete that and uh now it's starting to look for some sort of uh some short trades there's a level of demand right there you want to be a buyer of the euro you're looking for proof of value and then price to come back down into the level of demand before looking at long trades uh, or you're looking at price to come all the way down to here before looking to get uh, long if you're looking to get and get short then this is pretty much the area to look for short trades especially around this 1.14 round number into the highs of this area here um moving on to the euro yen and the euro yen this week managed to take profit at the lows around here around this 1.2120 level got short up here um and we're pretty much now um creating a bullish candle there is still risk off i think this is probably some sort of profit taking going on here risk is definitely um off um but the focus has been more on i think the uh some sort of uh, euro positivity or it could again just be profit taking if you are selling here then you have to buy to exit so buying creates demands you're in a demand zone proven value in this area here so a lot of demand orders coming into this area um, doesn't mean that this is necessarily a reversal just because it's a nice uh, engulfing outside type candle this could just be profit taking before a sell off and in fact there is a supply zone here which we will go into on the chart so at the moment if we make this slightly smaller in fact I'm going to do it from here uh, we've got a demand zone sorry a supply zone right here so supplies right there so we're up into the supply zone so what you want to do is if you are looking to get short and buy the Japanese yen based off risk off sentiment I would say um, and there's plenty of it at the moment doesn't mean that price is going to reverse here but um, there is definitely risk off sentiment in the air and that would be where you'd be looking for short trades this week if not be back up into this area or a higher area here before looking at short trades if you think that the euro is going to get stronger and the euro is really undervalued around here in a bargain price at this area here personally i'd probably be waiting for price to come back down to this area before looking at any kind of long trades um or you'd be looking for you know higher highs higher lows to be created so uh what you'd be looking for is for price to kind of sell off a little bit creating a bearish candle then looking for a move up before looking for a move back down into what would be demand and proof of value before looking at getting long so that's the uh the euro yen um next is the aussie dollar so aussie dollar this week and again dollar weakness and um us dollar weakness you know had a bit of an effect on this this currency pair and uh, came down into this demand zone where you had a bit of support long-term support as well before prices ended up going higher so now we can delete this um, this area here and from a long-term perspective I think what I'm going to do is use that as demand here um, so again looking at short trades for and buying the US dollar which I am definitely going to be a buyer um, of this that's the first area 
bit weak to be fair but there is a an area of supply there and then looking at short trades anywhere around this level before looking at short trades um, and just as a tip I was reading a Bloomberg article last week um, this is this is for the uh, members but uh, BlackRock who manage I think it's something like six trillion dollars I think it is is it trillion or is it billions no sorry it must be billions trillions a bit a bit too much but um <laughs> six billion dollars worth of um of uh, of assets and they basically were talking about the um they're, they're short on the Australian dollar and they think it's going to probably go down to the 0 0.65 level 65 cent level um, they said it's obviously not going to move in a, in a straight line um, but pretty much getting short and pullbacks and if BlackRock is saying that they are short in a Bloomberg article um, I'm, I'm definitely listening so uh, any short trades around here if you see any price action and then around this 70 um, 70 cent uh, round number if not a bit higher looking for short trades because like I said as much as, much as the US dollar um, are also cutting you know cutting rates the, the, the RB um, Reserve Bank of Australia are, are definitely in a worse position and they're uh, they're very dovish as well and they're cutting rates also and then finally we're going to the Aussie New Zealand sorry Aussie New Zealand Aussie Yen um, and again risk off sentiment still in the air and prices this week really have kind of you know stalled a little bit but you know trickling down um, as risk is still off nothing um, positive coming out for the Australian dollar especially with the long term um, uh, Australian um, monetary policy so it's literally just pullbacks to supply zones so this week if we're looking at the charts, um, da, 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 da. where am I? All right. So no, sorry, that was um, last week. What was it? Yeah, sorry, this is this week. So June twenty-first. Apologies, um, I was a bit lost there. And so this week pretty much we are where we are nothing's really changed there's no new supply zones you know to really put on the chart um, and uh, demand at the moment is still holding up I guess I'll move this down to maybe around here it's not typically how we do draw um, demand but it was a bit of a, an anomaly plus I don't really want to have this whole area as, uh, as green so it's okay to move that down to there um, I'm going to remove that level there until prices make uh, a new lower low then that area becomes supply um, but for now it hasn't so prices could still turn up so if you think that risk is probably going to come back on this week or less risk off then that's going to be the first area to look for some short trades and a bit higher um, uh, I should say that should be a buying opportunity for prices right now if you think this is going to be off more off than you're waiting for basic prices to come back up to supply zones and uh, buying the Japanese yen right so that's pretty much the place so less risk off buy trades right now in a lower time frame you know four hour one hour etc if you see your whatever price action you want to see and then trade it up to probably that supply zone and then um, if you think that risk is definitely going to come off at some point you know global slow down Trump uh, rhetoric Iran um, uh, also um, uh, being in the crossfires with, with America so uh, a lot of risk off events at the moment so uh, even though prices could come back to here we could see again some risk off come back into the market so um, that's it for this week uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, watching if you've made it this far and um, please like subscribe share comment um, I aim to get back to all of you guys at some point. I know this week has been really busy, but just bear with me and I will, you know, get back to you um, if you do have any kind of questions. Um, so, guys, take care. Have a great trading week and uh, take care.